Hey guys, I'm here with my final in-depth review of the Blackview DR650GW2 channel. So coincidentally, it's been just one day over a month since I posted that unboxing and first impressions video. A lot has happened personally for me since then. I've moved and gotten a new job, so I've been very busy and I'm happy to be able to get this review up. Since this camera is so similar to the DR550, I'm not going to cover all of the features such as the software or the Android and iOS app. I'll just provide a link above to my previous 550 review so you can see how that works there. So right off the bat, I'll say if you've seen my other videos, I always mention in my Blackview videos that I'm a fan of these cameras from Pitasoft. They're not perfect, but like I always say before, it's personal preference. If you saw my unboxing video of this camera, I did come up with a lot of issues, and all of those issues for the most part have been solved, so I'll go over what those issues were and how I resolved them. So this is the main camera here, and it's just like the 550 except it doesn't have the chrome rim, and it's also a more matte black. So. If you haven't seen my videos before, I did paint my 550, so you can see it's a matte black, and this used to be chrome, but other than that, they're virtually identical. You can see there it's a little bit grayer color. The other main physical difference is the fact that with the 650 now, you can take the cap off to get to the memory card without removing the AVI cable to the rear camera. And this is where the memory card is for both of the cameras. One thing you'll notice is I did actually use some Sharpie marker to cover the logo right there. I just used a Sharpie marker because it was really easy. And from outside of the car, you can't really notice the difference. I just didn't want anything bright or shiny on the front. So here you can see this is the memory card I initially used. And that is what gave me all my issues. I replaced it with this Transcend card. And there was a difference in how I formatted the cards though. I believe I formatted this with, with Windows. And I formatted this with a GUI format. And that formatted it in FAT32 I believe. So it's possible that my issues weren't actually the memory card, but just being formatted in, uh, I believe, XFAT, which is default for, for Windows. But either way, I was going to get a second 64GB card anyways, and I've been using this in my 550 as a rear camera, and it's been working great for that. I haven't had a single issue, and I haven't had an issue with this card, in the 650. So things have been working out good with both of these cards now. So as I've always mentioned, one of the greatest things to me about the Blackview cameras is the form factor. The mount clicks in right here, and I'll show that in a sec, but the mount clicks in right there and it uses a 3M sticky adhesive to stick to the window. And this gets the lens pretty close to the window a lot of other cameras like the G1W hang down from a suction cup mount or even the 3M sticky pad mounts, they hang down quite a bit from the window and I don't really like that design because I want my camera to be discreet. So the camera still has all the same features as the 550 and if you haven't seen my unboxing video I'll run through those real quick but that's the security light which blinks while it's recording. You can turn that off while in normal or parking mode. Back here we got a record light and a GPS light. The GPS light is always on during normal recording if you have a GPS signal. You can't turn that off, but you can turn off the recording light. That way, if you're using it in parking mode or something, you don't want people to see that it's recording because then it could just get stolen. And again on the side, like I mentioned before, the AV cable for the rear camera plugs in there, power cable. 
This is a Wi-Fi button, or you can hold it for 7 to 10 seconds to reformat your memory card. But I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend using the GUI format utility. Just Google it and format it in FAT32. It seems to work better in dash cameras. And on the side here, just like the 550, there is a Wi-Fi light right there. And this is also how you toggle the audio. In my 550 review, I mentioned that you had to tap it to turn it on or off. I thought it was a touch capacitive surface. But another user uh, commented and pointed out that it's actually uh, motion detection. So if you just go like that or move your finger in front of it, it actually toggles it. One thing I don't like that uh, followed tradition with the Blackview cameras is the rear camera has an LED light right there and you can't turn that off at all. I'm assuming because this only sends the audio and video signal. You can't change any sort of settings in this camera so most users just stick a little piece of black tape over it. I was planning on spray painting over it with a matte black but I just never got around to it. So I didn't really touch on the rear camera in my unboxing video. I do actually have it installed in a passenger side window. So, or actually my driver's side window. So it's it's not being used traditionally as how it's intended. The reason is because I have my DR550 in my rear window and that camera's rear camera is in the other uh, side window. That way I have four channels and I'm recording in all four directions. I will show some footage in this video of this camera, but it's going to be a little different since it's not being used as a rear camera. So one of the main benefits of the Blackview cameras is Pinasoft does sell their own hardwiring kits. And as you can see in the picture, it gives you an extra socket, but also lets you customize the settings so you can tell it what uh, voltage you should cut the power off to the camera if your car battery gets too low, and also how long it'll keep it, keep it in parking mode. In parking mode, it's not constantly recording, but it does record while something... It, by default if something drives in front of your car or also if something bumps into your car so you can turn the motion sensor off and depending on your situation you might want to do that which I learned recently um, with the G sensor if someone backs into you it'll s signal the camera to start recording and like most Korean brands it's buffering the recording so it will actually have a few seconds before the impact or before the motion trigger. The biggest issue I've noticed that I never realized with my 550 is the fact that in parking mode it's only recording at 15 frames per second. So it's most useful for just a low speed fender bender in a parking lot. I found out at my new job that the motion sensor is just triggering it way too often and after about eight hours the cameras get cut off because it's just draining the battery too much so depending on your situation you just you might want to just re uh, turn the motion sensor off completely because it's gonna constantly record if you're uh, sitting somewhere parked next to a lot of traffic I'll show an example of what this looks like So these clips are actually going to be for my 550, but my 550 and 650 are both hooked up to my PowerMagic Pro Plus. So when the 550 is triggering the recording, it's also going to drain my battery and eventually cut off my 650. So here you can see truck after truck after truck drives by every few minutes it seems like. I was just cherry picking random files throughout this day to show you what it looked like but eventually uh, my camera just or both cameras just turn off because after recording too many times 
they drain the battery too much and the Power Magic Pro eventually cuts it off. The Power Magic Pro Plus is the same box, but it actually gives you two plugs, and that's how I'm using the 550 and 650 at the same time to use a four channel setup. So, just like the 550, one of my favorite things about this camera is it's so packed full of features. It has the Wi Fi, so you can live stream video to your phone. It's not uh, that useful for live surveillance since it doesn't have very long range but it is helpful for setting your camera's angle and you can also stream uh, video files from the camera to your phone and then if you find a video file that you need to save you can wirelessly transfer that to your phone that way you can save it to your computer later this means you don't have to pull the memory card out and put it in your computer or phone or whatever it's just pretty convenient. The GPS is obviously another nice feature that usually only cameras that are at least a hundred dollars have and I said in the previous video that I thought that the GPS was necessary for the parking mode. I'm not even totally sure still. I thought the GPS was necessary for the camera to realize it's uh, suddenly moving again but that could just be the G sensor also. Because I'm pretty sure when I've accidentally bumped the camera while par while in parking mode, it uh, switched to normal recording. And my personal preference, I actually prefer no screen. There is a DR750 model that has a very large screen, but that's targeted towards the South Korean market. And they don't have an issue with theft from their cars, like... America does or I'm sure some other countries so a discrete design is very important to me and if the screen is very small like the Street Guardian or the A118 then I don't care but if it's huge then I personally don't want it. Like I mentioned earlier it does have uh, some software so you can watch your video files seamlessly view the GPS data and you can export those files into complete video files. I'm not going to go over that again since I did go over that in my 550 review so again I'll just link it above and also if you watch that video it will show you the iOS and Android app they're basically the same in that video I do use the Android app though one feature that I really love that all the Blackview cameras have is the audio notifications. So when the camera starts, it'll tell you that it's starting to record. And when it switches to parking mode, it'll tell you that it's switching to parking mode. You can set the settings to include a beep sound anytime you set off the G sensor. So ideally, this is for when you get hit by a car or whatever. You some sort of impact will cause the G-Sensor to alert that something happened and will mark that as an event. So the audio notifications are pretty convenient and the reason I really like them is I want to be 100% sure when I get into my car that it's recording. I don't want to have to look at the recording light like other cameras. As soon as I start driving and it tells me it's recording, that's very reassuring. So there are some cons to this camera and that's sort of expected when you buy a Blackview if you've researched them. The biggest issue that has always been an issue for Blackview cameras is their bit rate. Once again, the 650 doesn't have a very high bit rate. It's just over 8,000 megabits per second for the front camera and around 3,000 for the rear camera, which is still only 720p, which is another issue. Cameras now are starting to come out that are two channel just like this front and rear but both of them 1080p the 750 model does actually have a full 1080p rear camera but it's a lot more expensive and it has that big bulky screen 
I really wish Blackview would have done full 1080p for the rear camera also. So I did notice something with this camera that I never noticed with the 550. When you turn the Wi-Fi on, it actually drops the frame rate. It's not a huge deal, but it is very noticeable. It drops from about 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second. And I was very surprised when I watched this video footage when I had Wi-Fi on. And I didn't realize at first what was going on. It took me a few minutes to realize it was because I turned the Wi-Fi on. And speaking of frame rate, I noticed that in parking mode it only actually records in 15 frames per second. That might be advertised, but it's very possible that other people already knew that it was only 15 frames per second in parking mode, but I actually didn't know that. So when I was sifting through video files the past few weeks, going through the parking mode files, I, that's how I noticed. I was wondering why the video footage looked a little worse, and then I checked the file, and yeah, it was actually 15 frames per second. I went back to my 550 and checked those files, and it was the same with the frame rate. So that's just something I never noticed with my 550, I guess. So in the future, when I test cameras with multiple features like Wi-Fi and parking mode, I'm going to make sure to double check the different video files in different modes. So I'm going to show some footage of the camera now. And in the previous video, I mentioned I had an issue with the blur. And I think actually it wasn't the focus issue that I was having. Lately I've just had a very dirty car and I think the uh, dust and uh, smear marks on my window is what was actually blurring the video quality. There were times where it looked horrendously blurry and in reality it was just my window wasn't clean enough. My issue is my Civic's uh, windshield wipers don't go high enough to get to the center uh, near the rearview mirror, so I have to constantly remember I need to clean that off. So in this video, which is pretty funny because of this woman making a U-turn down the wrong direction, you can see it's blurry again, but you can't really make out some of the dust. As it goes through the light, you can see how there is a lot of dust on my window, and that's actually what a lot of the blur is caused by. That's actually why I do have the Mobius mount down on my dashboard in case I need a spare camera during bad weather. But I'll show some video files of how varying the video quality can be and I feel a little stupid actually for not noticing that a lot of the issues were just because of the uh, dust and whatever else on my windshield. So now I'm going to show you some video footage from the camera and this clip right here is actually the rear camera in my driver's side window. So while I'm not even moving it looks pretty nice but once it starts moving the low 3 megabit per second bitrate starts to show its toll. Here's some pretty harsh sunlight shining straight into my side camera or a rear camera, whatever you're going to use yours for, but the big thing to notice is how much the fish eye affects the camera when you're looking at a sideways view. If you're pointing this directly back, it's not as noticeable, but since I have it in my driver's side window, it is very noticeable. Also, when cars are moving in opposite direction as you, it's very hard to pause it and see any detail but that's sort of expected this is more to capture something like a t-bone collision the star of this camera system is obviously the front camera though and you can see here even with the dirt and mud on my window the video quality seems to me to be an improvement over the 550 it seems to handle motion a little bit better and overall, it is a slight improvement.
even in harsh light with the sun shining directly into the camera, it still does a pretty good job. You can see quite a bit of detail in the road and the trees. An issue I've had is getting my exposure levels to look good. With my Civic's really slanted window, I'm either getting too much of the sky or too much of the dashboard. So I ended up settling on just pointing the camera straight forward so it's not pointing up or down at all. This way it captures about a third of my dashboard and about a third of the sky. And overall it seems like this is what has gotten me my best video quality. So even here again, the sun is shining somewhat into the camera, and it still looks pretty decent. So here's a clip with my window very dirty, and see if you can notice between the dirt spots or water spots, if you can notice the quality changing. On YouTube it might not be possible, but this is a good example of why you really need to keep your window clean if you're using a dash camera. If you have a Civic like me, placing it behind the rear view mirror is going to be an issue and you're going to have to keep your window clean as much as possible. With all the pros and cons of this camera, I still do really like this camera, but then we come to the price. <laughs> and I paid out of pocket $420 US for this camera. And that was without the Power Magic Pro. I al I already had those. I got the 550 with the Power Magic Pro for $325 earlier this year. So this camera is a hundred dollars more, and basically the only difference is it has an all black design, and it has about two megabit per second advantage over the 550. But when it was only about 6 megabits per second, that's not even a very big uh, jump. It's still very low compared to even a $100 dash camera. So what it comes down to, again, is personal preference. If you've watched this video and, and you think this video quality is good enough, then that shouldn't stop you if, if it's within your price range. My issue I see is that other cameras are coming out and at this price point this camera is not going to be able to compete. If this camera came without the PowerMagic Pro and mine came with a 16 gigabyte card but I don't think it should be more than 300 to 350 dollars that's for sure. For me I wanted to try it out because I really like the 550 and I had some money to spare. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but when it comes down to it, for an average consumer, I'm not sure if I could really recommend this camera at the current price point. You really, really would have to like the form factor like I do to justify paying $420 for this camera. Again, that was with only 16 gigabytes, uh, the memory card, when it supports up to 64, so I had to buy you know, a, a second memory card, and it doesn't come with a hardwiring kit, so that right there is probably going to be the deal breaker for any of you guys watching this video today. In the end, like I said, I do like this camera. I would recommend it to anyone that can spare the money and really likes this form factor, but that's going to come down to your own personal choice. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like any of my videos, I would appreciate if you hit like or subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.